Just before dawn on 25th of April 1915, HMAS AE-2 was the first submarine to penetrate the minefields and strong currents of the Dardanelles. This 700-ton submarine with 32 people in it had a strategic impact uh, at that moment on the landings. Of course, for the next two or three hours, everything in the Narrows was concentrated on hunting AE-2. Uh, they weren't worrying about getting troops across to Gallipoli. They were chasing the submarine. After five days of attacking Turkish supply ships in the Sea of Marmara, AE-2's hull was pierced by shells in a battle with the Turkish torpedo boat Sultan Hazar. Unable to dive, the AE-2's captain, Dekas Toka, ordered his crew to abandon ship and scuttle the submarine to prevent her falling to Turkish hands. It's a remarkable how few people know about the adventure that uh, Stoker and his crew and the boat uh, you know, undertook and very, very few people realise that this happened on the first Anzac Day. Now, a joint Australian-Turkish team has mounted an expedition to look inside the submarine and reveal her archaeological secrets. Conditions were perfect as the crew were ferried out to the dive boat. The first task was to secure the dive ship over the submarine. A remote operating vehicle, or ROV, was lowered into the water to locate the submarine. It was set on a bearing of 340 degrees. Within minutes, the AE-2 emerged out of the gloom. The hull is in remarkably good condition with trawler damage affecting only small sections of the casing. The conning tower is clearly visible. Marine growth covers the exterior helping to slow corrosion, including on these periscope standards. Before divers could begin work on the AE-2, a diver support platform had to be lowered over the boat. The deep offshore diving team were critical to the operation. The diving bell lowers the divers 70 metres to the sea floor. The diver support platform fitted neatly over the conning tower near the partially opened hatch. The divers carefully cleaned away the shells and silt around the hatch to avoid it falling into the submarine. A high definition camera and lighting system specially developed by the Defence Science and Technology Organisation was lowered into AE2's control room. For the first time in 99 years, it was possible to capture high-quality vision of AE-2's interior. The next challenge was to get an ROV inside the submarine. A Seapotix ROV fitted with HD camera and ARIS imaging sonar has been specially modified for the job. So with the ROV, we can, it's got motors and we can move in all directions inside the submarine so we can go and, uh, approximately 20 metres inside the submarine. Once inside the conning tower, the ROV revealed much of the AE-2 is still in beautiful condition. The engine room telegraph, the conning tower steering wheel, a timber flag locker with stowed plimsolls. Every day we've been out there, it's just like a, a, new, a new awakening. We've just seen you know, bits and pieces from the plans that sort of correlate with the diaries, but to be able to see, I guess, the, the space that's here and just where they lived and the forms of it and the complexity, there's pipes and valves and fittings and little small things that you know, really relate to the crew, which are really quite, quite sort of moving to see.
I think we're, we're really trying to unlock this unique story. And Gallipoli is always known to Australians for an army campaign, but it's a little, a little known fact that the Australian Navy were here, and actually these guys, the crew of AE2, were the first in combat that day. It's a remarkable story, and it's a part of Australia's history, part of Turkey's history, and the archaeological sites, part of our world history.